The Nazgul 5 is an amazing freestyle drone, but let's be honest, this thing is a little bit heavy and a little bit porky. And with Remote ID just around the corner, I don't want to be forced to register in this drone. But what if there was a freestyle 5-inch drone that was under 250 grams? Well, that's not possible with the Flyfish RC25 freestyle frame. So let's open this up and see if that's true. <laughs> okay, so here it is, the 25 freestyle frame. And I chuckle only because it's strange to believe that a 5-inch drone like this size can fit into a small and light package like the one we see right here. So let's open this up and see what's inside. All right, so we have the actual frame and the arms. Man, this thing is, wow, very small and light. So here's your entire frame right here, all the carbon fiber. You have some stickers, which is pretty cool. Looks like some zip ties. I don't know what we'll be using that for, but we'll figure that out later. We have two actual battery straps. Really nice, like the color scheme. And then you have a Ziploc bag here with all your hardware, including standoffs, bolts, and even a camera mount. This thing is pretty compact. And then finally, we have two battery mats. Looks very sticky. And looks like some TPU mount here for your antenna. Let's get these carbon fiber pieces out. All right, so here they are. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually kind of interested to just assemble this and get this thing in the air because this thing looks a lot lighter than I expected. Now you have your top plate right here. It's pretty cool. It has the 25 on here with the Flyfish logo. Looks really, really nice. Then you have the mid plate here with some Preston nuts and then the bottom plate right here. So pretty nice. Now these are all two millimeters thick and usually this isn't really an issue, a point of fracture or a stressed area. So not too bad. Two millimeters isn't that bad. Now the arms here, these are the parts that's gonna take the, the brunt of the force if you do encounter a crash. Now these are all identical arms. These are four millimeters thick, so a little bit thicker, yet they're very, very light. Now these are all identical on here, so you can use either or any one of these arms for any part of the frame on here. Now interestingly enough, you know, this four millimeter here isn't bad at all. What I'm concerned about is how thick these arms are. So or wide, how wide they are. So we'll see if that's gonna be an uh, area of concern, but no big deal. All right, so let's get this thing here assembled because I'm sure we all wanna see, including myself, how this thing is gonna look once it's assembled here. So the best thing is to get all your parts organized on the desk, and I'll try to get all these hardware out of here. Now there's instructions to this on the Flyfish RC website. But the cool thing here, look at this. <laughs> Now the cool thing here are all these bags are actually labeled. So as you can see, it says, yeah, and I don't even know why they did that, but you have a right and a left. They didn't put it in the same bag. So this is your CNC camera mount. It's labeled. Your silicone vibration dampers for the 20 millimeter cameras. Silicone vibration dampers for the 19 millimeter camera. And that's what I'll be using. So that's the one I want to take a look at. M218 countersunk, some nuts, some standoff. But yeah, it's really, really thoughtful how they label all this stuff. Like this takes... <laughs> tons of efforts to just put all these screws in individual bags. Now, building a drone can get really complex due to these reasons, actually. Sometimes most of the manufacturers will put all these bolts and screws in just one bag and you have to figure out which one goes where. But these things here are all labeled correctly. So the top plate, we're not gonna use this right now, so let's put this to the side. We're just gonna use our actual bottom and mid plate or sandwich plate and try to get this thing here lined up. Make sure you have your threads facing up and these are gonna hold your actual bolts to secure your actual flight controller to the frames. As you can see, this thing has great detail in here. Most of these top plates and the bottom plate has a lot of countersunk drills or holes in here. And that's good because typically most frames use like a regular bolt and that bolt puts pressure on a specific point. With these countersunk, not only is it gonna be flush, but it also distributes the pressure a little bit more evenly across the plate here, whether it be the top plate or the bottom plate. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my actual four screws here. These are M3, 12 millimeters. And the cool thing, you can also see they have thread lock on here. Perfect. So we'll just do one of those for now. That goes straight through there. And look how flat this thing is. All right, and this is gonna be the point where your standoff is attached to. So I'd recommend we do it second or last. The next thing we need is the M2 screws. 
It looks like they've made some slight changes here on the website. I was looking for an M2 by eight because this obviously uses the bigger hole here to actually hold the arm and that goes to your standoffs. But then there should be a smaller hole here and that should be an M2 by eight. And I don't see any M2 by eight here. So looks like they made a slight alteration. So now they have an M2 by nine. So just a little bit longer, but these should be the one for it. And there's no other documentation saying what the M2 by nine is for. So your package might have M2 by nine or M2 by eight. This might be a revision. An M2 by nine shouldn't be a problem either. That might be actually a better fit for them. Let's see here. Really nice. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same for all the other arms. Put that one through here. Okay, so we have those M two by nine in here. We're not gonna use the remainder of these and these go through the arm. Man, look at this, these countersunk bolts and the cut for the carbon fiber make it look so smooth and professional. And here's your under, you have your four bolts here poking out. And you can just put the standards on there if you want to. I think that's what I'll do next. We have six of them. All right, I think we need only five. So I'll just keep the extra one right here. And it's as simple as just screwing this on to the top. Nice. All right, so the fifth one goes in the rear right here, and that's gonna require a shorter M3 bolt. So here it is, M3 by eight. We have six of them, and this is gonna be used for that bottom bolt as well as all the top holes as well for the top plate. And we're not gonna install the top plate just as yet because we have to put the camera in the front. So easier to just put this down there. It is countersunk as well. This is gonna look really, really clean. All right. So here you go, this looks really, really nice. I'm liking it, it is light, <laughs> it is light. All right, it's as simple as now just installing the actual front camera. And we have this CNC camera mount and it's labeled left and right, so that's pretty cool. And they have actual bolts or holes at the bottom so we can put that in there. We're gonna use the M2 bolts. We have six of them, so let's use that. We'll be using all six of them just for the camera. And then the other side, the left side, it does match left and left, right and right. All right, that looks good. This is all level, so I think we're almost ready for a top plate. Um, you have your small little TPU here for the front bumper. I'm gonna leave it off for now, but I'll still wait in here. And then this should be for the rear standoff, so you can put your antenna on here or through here. There it is. That's it, that's, that's it. Let's just put the top plate on here. This should all fall into place, which it did. All the holes match up. Let's start off with these M3 for now. We'll put like one or two in there. And the fact that the top is also countersunk is amazing. It's gonna look really nice. I'm loving it already. We'll put the, the two top ones here for the camera on as well, the M2 bolts. The fact that I have to disassemble this, man, it's gonna be a pain trying to manage these screws uh, later on. Man, I changed my mind, I'm gonna put all of them. Only because I'm also, I also wanna wait and see how much this thing weighs with almost all the required hardware on it. All right, this is the last bolt. Let's take a look at this. Not too shabby, look at this. Looks really, really nice. This, <laughs> look at the orange, man. This thing is, is narrow, guys. Now I have some other accessories here. I'm gonna include the actual front bumper here in the wing as well as the battery mat and then the actual battery strap. So the time is here, guys. Let's weigh this and see how much this thing here actually weighs because this thing feels like a, a light, tiny whoop, guys. So here it is, let's put this in the scale. 55 grams, so not that heavy at all, 56. Here's the front bumper here, which I may or may not include. Same weight, that didn't change much. Here's a battery mat, 57 grams, 58. And definitely we need a battery strap for it. So we're gonna put the battery strap on here. And there you go, 62 grams. So this thing is fairly light, close to around 50 grams. So we have around 190 grams to play with. Can we make that work? 
Is that right? 190 grams? Yeah, 190 grams we have to play with. <laughs> 190 grams to make this 250 grams total. And I think that's possible. Okay guys, so this is the final product, at least for the frame here. And this is supposed to be a five inch joint. So let's see how this thing here stacks up to the actual Nazgul 5. All right. So as you can see, the arms are a little bit shorter, just a little bit, but it does support five inch propellers. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. Now you can see the X is a little bit different. It looks like a true X is just a little bit wider. Now you can see the difference here as well. So we're talking about the details in the 25 with all this countersunk screws and holes. A lot of the bolts on here are actually just on the surface and you can see a, a huge difference here. So this is gonna create a lot more even pressure on the actual sandwich plate. So a lot of details on here. Now I'm still waiting for the motors from Flyfish RC to make this thing here work, but I do have all the other electronics in here, including my VTX and my flight controller. So this is gonna be a pretty cool build. How are we gonna go with HD zero? This thing is super light and then the SpeedyB mini flight controller. So hopefully this thing all comes under 250 grams. Now, if you're interested in this build and see if I can pull it off and see if I can make a very effective and fun five inch freestyle drone that's sub 250, then hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that video. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.